thank you. Thank you. Um, many of you know I had a, a few weeks off um, to plan and prepare. And, uh, in preparing for um, my, my first several weeks of messages, I, I had considered something on the Ten Commandments, and I wish I would have stuck to that because on Friday I started looking for my manual. And I couldn't find it. I'm like, this is going to look really bad if I have to go to someone else, go to Jaron and say, can I borrow a manual? I need to look something up and then that's mine right there. So I may stick to the Ten Commandments. We may start with thou shalt not steal. <laughs> because that, I knew where it was supposed to be. So thank you for returning it to me this morning. Apparently we need a couple backups around the church. Well, um, you've probably noticed this by now. Um, everyone's in here this morning. We don't have any nurseries open. We don't have your kids are fine in here. Uh, they may bug the people around you, but they will not bother me. Um, these are symbols here. And, and I know they already touched on. I, I don't. I don't need to um, go through that whole thing again. Um, but but these symbols represent uh, something. And, and I'm kind of a big symbol guy. A big memorial, memorializing things, being reminded of things. And and I, I brought with me this rock this morning. I, I also am a big fan of rocks. And I know that sounds kind of silly. But I've just always liked rocks. There's something intriguing about rocks. Um, you know, and as a kid, we kind of collect them and, and we take them from different places that we've been. And I was in California this past week and I brought some rocks home because I, don't, I just wanted to remember where I was and, and what had happened there. And this particular rock is really special to me. I mentioned this uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, when I when I sat right here and I answered questions before uh, the week before the congregational vote, I mentioned this rock uh, that I'd kept and I've kept all these years in, in, in my desk drawer. And it's just a simple little rock, uh, but but this rock represents something really special to me. A um, uh, little over 15 years ago now, I sat in a parking lot, and uh, and I was uh, I had been invited uh, by you to come and be your youth pastor. And this rock was sitting over there. I was praying. I was, I was contemplating. I was just saying, Lord, is this what you want? And I reached over and I grabbed this rock. And there's nothing powerful about this rock. But I grabbed this rock and I held on to it. I looked at it. And, and as I held it, um, I, just, I just felt a peace. Um, that this place is where I was supposed to be. And so I keep this rock as a, just a reminder um, of God is leading his presence in that moment. Um, his leading uh, day to day. Just a reminder that, yeah, remember when the Lord called you to this place. And so this is a, this is a significant rock for me. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, there's a rock. And this rock plays a, a, a significant role in the Israelite people. Will you stand with me? We're going to read from the word of the Lord, starting in 1 Samuel chapter 7. I'm going to read verses 3 through 12. So Samuel said to all the Israelites, If you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then rid yourselves of the foreign gods and the Ashtoreths and, and commit yourselves to the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So the Israelites put away all their veils and Ashtoreths and served the Lord only. Then Samuel said, Assemble all Israel at Mizpah. 
and I will intercede with the Lord for you. When they had assembled there, they drew water and poured it out before the Lord. On that day they fasted, and there they confessed. We have sinned against the Lord. Now Samuel was serving as leader of Israel at Mizpah. When the Philistines heard that Israel had assembled at Mizpah, the rulers of the Philistines came up to attack them. When the Israelites heard of it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. They said to Samuel, do not stop crying out to the Lord our God for us, that he may rescue us from the hand of the Philistines. Then Samuel took a lamb and sacrificed it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. And he cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf, and the Lord answered him. While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to engage Israel in battle. But that day the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them into such a panic that they were routed before the Israelites. The men of Israel rushed out to Mizpah, pursued the Philistines, slaughtering them all the way to a point below Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shin. He named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. See, it was over 1,100 years before the time of Jesus. The people of Israel had conquered much of the promised land, but it hadn't been easy. The infant nation was still surrounded by many powerful enemies. In fact, 20 years before the event that takes place in this text, one of the darkest days in ancient Israel took place. In a single day, Israel not only suffered a great military defeat, but also lost the Ark of the Covenant into enemy hands. The Ark was the symbol of God's presence among them. It was the worst disaster imaginable. Israel would soon regain the Ark, but nothing was ever the same Again, the terrible memory of that day would continue to discourage an entire nation for a generation. Twenty years later, approximately, Samuel, the great judge and prophet of the nation, calls a meeting of the nation's leaders. He tells them that if they want to experience the blessings of God, they need to return their faith to him. Times had been tough, but they would never be better until they turned to God. The entire nation, we read, responds positively. At Mizpah, the nation gathered in prayer to seek God's blessing again. And at that very moment, the Philistine army saw an opportunity to attack while Israel's warriors were in prayer. But Samuel, learning of the plans, has the soldiers form battle lines, and the Philistines are turned back in defeat, and a great victory for Israel is won. To mark that occasion of that great military victory and the day of their great return to faith, Samuel raises a memorial marker, a rock. And this rock would be a reminder of the great events of that day. And Samuel gave the rock a name. He called it Ebenezer, which means stone of help, saying, thus far has the Lord helped us. A new church of the Nazarene was born <clears throat> on June 26, 1910. Through these 108 years, the church has survived, and it's been a beacon to the community. We pay tribute to all of those in the past who prayed, sacrificed, paid, 
and shed many tears for this church so that we can celebrate today. You're a little early back there. Don't worry, David dropped a guitar, so we might mix that last song. So. Many souls have been saved and sanctified through her open doors. 26 pastors have served this church during these 108 years. Many of these ministers are reaping their reward in heaven. Two of these ministers are with us here today. Pastor Don Dunn served this church from 1989 to 2010. Don, would you? I know you hate this, but would you stand up? Would you please stand up? Can we just... And then uh, I get to call him dad. Pastor Bob Giffen served from 2010 to 2017. Dad, I know most of us know you, but will you will you stand up? And, uh, and uh, I had the honor and the privilege of serving under and with these two men for the past 15 years. During the summer of 1910, Reverend and Mrs. Ira Stevens were included with a group that was called before a church board and they were dismissed because of their light on holiness. This was preached at a holiness camp meeting in Buns Grove in North Lawrence. Not having a home because of dismissal, the Reverend C.B. Jernigan of the Oklahoma District was called to help these holiness people here in Lawrence who desired a Nazarene church. Reverend Joseph Speaks was sent to Lawrence to organize the church of the Nazarene with 12 charter members on June 26, 1910. Needing a place to worship, this group rented an upstairs hall at 4th and Elm Street for $5 a month. It was here that they worshipped <clears throat> until a building of their own could be constructed. And the Reverend Ira Stevens was the first pastor. His salary was $5 a week. Desiring a permanent place of worship, a building was constructed at 4th and Lincoln Street, and much of the labor was done by congregation members. This building was home to Lawrence Nazarenes for 12 years. It was during this time that Reverend Estella Lennard was called to be pastor in 1921, representing one of the first occasions of a female pastor in the Nazarene denomination. Six years. Think about what was going on at that time, 1921. And yet we, as a congregation, said, if the Lord calls, we will do this. She served the church faithfully for six years. In October of 1927, work began on a new building at 1842 Vermont Street. The first services were held in December of that same year. They started building in October. They held services in December. Now, it wasn't a building like this, but it's pretty impressive. The Great Depression brought on a real struggle for survival. At one point, the Reverend Brees, who was pastoring here and served from 1929 to 1934, took a rug off the parsonage floor and sold it to help pay expenses so the church doors could remain open. During a revival in 1944, the evangelist, Reverend Anderson, felt the Lord leading the church to pay off the mortgage on the building. Now, can you imagine if somebody from the outside came in and said, hey, you all should pay off your mortgage. That's actually, that's a pretty good way to go about it for a pastor, I think, right? To just, hey, can you come in and just tell everybody we should pay off our... <coughs> On that Sunday morning, pledges were made and money was raised, 
and the $1,500 balance was paid off later that year. And you see a picture there from 1944 of them burning that mortgage. The final Sunday in the church in Vermont Street took place in 1954. And several of you present here today can actually be found in that picture as small children and teenagers, some young adults. Many of you can find family members in that photo, and that photo hangs in one of our classrooms over here. I encourage you to go check that room out. The acquisition and subsequent construction of the new building at 1942 Massachusetts Street includes too many acts of faithfulness and sacrifice to include here due to time. Perhaps it really isn't time that keeps me from explaining the story as much as it is that the story includes so many miracles that it can't be adequately explained using words. From 1954 to the year 2000, this building was home to Lawrence First Church of the Nazarene. During this time, many ministries were born which God used to bring lost and broken people to him. Sports were a great opportunity for fellowship and outreach. There were church baseball teams, basketball teams, uh, softball teams. Throughout the years, sports has been a part of the DNA of this church. From these early teams shown here to more recent competitive adult softball teams, three-on-three -three basketball leagues and tournaments, sports has regularly played an important role as one aspect and one avenue of our mission to reach people for Christ. In the late 1960s, an influx of international students on the KU campus brought with it an opportunity for the church to share the love of Christ. The church hosted meals, Bible studies, and fellowship opportunities for these students. Included in this group of students, don't miss this, were a segment of Vietnamese students ministered to and loved by our church during a hostile time in our country. If you know anything about history, think about that. In the late 1960s, this church ministered to Vietnamese students. risky. A bus ministry was started in order to help people get to church who may not have otherwise been able to experience Lawrence First Church. That's Harold. Discipleship remained a key component of Lawrence First Church and was further strengthened by many of you here today who are shown in this photo, many of your family members. Kids and youth have always been a priority and remain so even to this day. I made that sentence short so that those three of you in that picture who don't want to admit it's you, we can move on to the next picture. So. <laughs> Sorry, Wendy, had to do it. <laughs> As the church approached the 21st century, it became clear that a new location was necessary in order to continue to be who God had called the church to be. Much prayer, planning, and painstaking effort went into acquiring 91 acres south of Lawrence. Many found it difficult to move forward because of the legacy and the history that had taken place at 1942 Mass. But nonetheless, they understood that part of God's plan for us included stepping out on faith and constructing the new building here at 1470 North 1000 Road. Since the turn of the century, Lawrence First Church has seen a continuation of the foundation laid by those who have gone before us. Ministries and outreach to the community continue to be front and center with our serving at Link, volunteering at a local food pantry, our annual car show, family fun day, trunk or treats, Easter extremes, 
Overseas mission trips are still a big part of God's calling for Lawrence First. As teams commissioned by the church have placed several hundred clean water filters in Guatemala. Discipleship remains a key component with many flourishing Bible studies, Sunday school classes, small group gatherings focused on helping people become more like Christ. All of our people from the youngest baby to elementary age kids, teenagers, college students, young adults, middle-aged adults, and on up. Wasn't sure what to call that next group. <laughs> you all continue to be a priority as we seek to help all know Christ, grow in faith, and show Jesus to others. Thus far, the Lord has helped us. Amen. And you know, today's a special day. Today's a day we celebrate. And I'm honored and humbled to be standing before you today to follow God's leading and assume the position behind this podium representing the sacred covenant that we are entering into as church and pastor. But see, today's not about me. You notice as I read those, I said we. As we talk about those people back in 1910, I still refer to them as we. Yesterday marks the beginning of my pastoral tenure here at Lawrence First Church. Sunday, February 25th, 2018. It'll be a day that'll be recorded in some books in the church history. It'll be a day that years from now, when I'm asked, how long have you been at that church? I'll use it as a reference point as I figure out the years and the months. But today isn't about me. Today is really about we. Today marks a milestone for us as a church. It marks the day when we look back on how the Lord has thus far helped us. We look back because by looking back, we're reminded that our lineage here at Lawrence First Church of the Nazarene is one that is filled with individuals who took leaps of faith that were honored and blessed by God. They took steps of obedience that God blessed and used it as a catalyst for bringing his kingdom here on earth. Our history is not just something to read about in the notebooks, in a classroom, in the East Hallway, although I encourage you to go over there. Go check those things out. Go see who we are. Not just something to read about in a notebook, but it's a foundation on which we will move ahead into the future. See, Samuel raised a memorial marker. He raised a rock that would serve as a reminder of how God had helped the Israelites to that point. It was a reminder of God's strength, his provision, his guidance, and his faithfulness. But these were not just attributes for which the Israelites were to simply be reminded. They were to be memories that provided a blueprint for how they would proceed from that day forward. By remembering, they could move forward knowing that God would continue because he had to that point. Be the source of help, strength, wisdom, discernment, endurance, and faithfulness for them as a people. As we reflect on our past as the people of Lawrence First Church of the Nazarene, may we move forward from this point 
by keeping our history close. May we stand on the foundation laid before us. May our history not simply be stories in a book, but a blueprint for how God will continue to lead us from this point forward as we are obedient to his ways. May we learn from those before us said it wasn't simply enough to keep doing things the way they were done, but stepped out on faith, stepped out in obedience, and said, if the Lord is calling us, then we'll do it. Our worship team is going to come back up. on guitar. We'll see, right? <laughs> and we're going to um, we're going to sing. This is a good old song. But it's a song of obedience. It's a song of repentance. It's a song of Remembering. So will you stand with me now as we celebrate what the Lord has done to this point?